You're watching HCAM TV. Good evening. This is Cheryl Peralt coming from my home for Friday night wake up call. First off, I want to send birthday greetings to my very own father who's turned 80 today. And I'm grateful for my father um, and uh, that we are still uh, learning and teaching with each other. I'm learning gardening from him. He's learning about poetry. So happy birthday, dad. I wanted to take a few minutes uh, myself talking this evening before we start with uh, an exciting program for this evening. I have uh, five uh, of folks on board for the first part of our feature. Um, but I did want to say uh, at this time, this is a program that offers some time for poetry and songs of songwriters and also talk a little bit about life and creative process. Um, and before we get started, I just wanted to address tonight uh, the awareness at this time of pandemic, which is why we got started. We are facing about 104,000 who have died uh, related to the pandemic that we know of in our country. Uh, 365,000 in the world, a lot of loss for us to comprehend and grieve somebody's mother, father, sister, brother, or child. And I have been made aware in our own local community the loss of a few friends that we've had who came and were features at Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. I'd like to say their names. Izzy Dubberg, who loved using humor and the funny side of life and yodeling in his original and cover songs. Sandra Haddon, a powerhouse of a singer-songwriter who died recently and sang for justice and was an activist for veterans. Mary Pratt, just recently, who had a beautiful, caring heart, a deep soul, and had an ethereal voice and gifted songwriter. Uh, uh, sadness for their loss and, and love to their families and loved ones. And I would also like to mention uh, what we are likely aware of, the loss also of George Floyd, who's been in the news this, this week, a black man who died tragically in police custody, unarmed and handcuffed with a knee to his neck for eight minutes saying, I can't breathe with one of the officers now charged for murder. And I just want to say that George was a father and a brother and a son and take a moment to send love to his family and also to the families of the others that I mentioned, the world of us knowing all the change and the healing that is needed for our world as we go on. I'm glad that we are talking about the topic of hope this evening with both our uh, features of poetry and our singer songwriter. And but I feel that both uh, feature segments, uh, the people are involved uh, in sharing words of hope with community in some way. And um, the idea in sharing this also is to contribute to the concept of hope and healing for our uh, pandemic and post pandemic world. And we will be starting talking about poetry this evening. And I have Cynthia Franza on board, uh, as well as a number of participants here with me uh, in this project that Cynthia is going to talk about for, uh, oh, Cynthia, you have six minutes now. Ooh. And uh, Cynthia <laughs> Franza, I'll just say, arrived here from Brazil uh, just a few years ago. And uh, she is a force, a creative force. And she started talk to, talking to me just a couple of months ago now with the pandemic about her idea of uh, words of hope. So Cynthia, can you tell us about the idea you had for community and how you got started, where the project is now and uh, what's ahead? And also maybe share a few words of your own. Okay, 
Perfect. Thank you, Cheryl, for having me. I'm so glad to see other poets here. They are part of the book. Yay, the project. Thank you so much for your submissions also. Um, yeah, I wrote a talk with Cheryl in March. You were talking to start the pandemic and people talk about you cannot travel, you cannot, you have a lot of issues and, and people are facing the so much bad news. But you need hope. You're, I, I was sharing this with Cheryl. You need hope to our neighborhoods, to our um, communities, to our country and to our world. How can you do that? And then you start to think about ideas, about ideas of hope, how to bring words of hope. And in comes uh, Hop Down and Beyond, Words of Hope That Connect Us in Challenging Times is the name of the project. Back in March, it's a, it was an idea. In April 10th, you launched the project officially uh, on our website, hoptontruepoetry.book.com. And in, for our surprise, so far you have 106 submissions for the project since the beginning, since April 10th. So I check how many, <laughs> how many poems and stories you have so far. Uh, first, what is Hopton True Poetry? You ask people for submit for our, our website. They submit stories of hope and talk a little bit about them and why they are, sub why they are submitting this poem of hope, this story about hope. Because it really, you need this for uplift our spirits. So you send this, the word out, you spread the word. And then so far uh, with 106 submissions, you have 86 poems, eight stories and 12 favorite poems they sent to us. So we are very happy and very thankful for that. And when is the deadline? Oh, important. May 31st is the deadline for submissions. So you can go to our website again, hoptontruepoetrybook.com and send your submission. And you are doing the, you are checking all the poems in June and you're notifying the writers about the status by the end of June. So we have, because we have so much, so we have to check the poems and probably reply with some questions for the writers, some sentences about themselves, about the moment you are living. And, uh, and then at the end of June, you are talking with the writers about the status of the project. Right. You have a, a very um, fast timeline, hoping for the end of the year to have this project completed with yeah. Damiano Publishing. Yeah, you are publishing this book. Uh, our plan is publishing this book by the end of the year in December. Uh, you're doing Damiano's publishing in Framingham. And another news, if I have time to share, is uh, you have an amazing project going on in Metro West in our country called Front Steps Project like photographers go into the houses and take pictures of the families in their homes and the fee for the photos go for charities. So you contact three photographers from three towns, Hopkinton, South Row, and Framingham and invite them to be part of this project with us. So our book have words of hope and photos of families for, it's like a unique and historical moment where we put together words and photos of people. So it's like a real portrait of our time. So yes. they say yes. So you have three, you have around 20 photos coming for our book. So it will be like a real portrait of our time. That's right. And there's a spectrum of uh, writers of different levels of experience from published writers out in the field to people who are beginners who are submitting for contributions of what they see as hope. And exactly. uh, I know we have, uh, it's very exciting. You have about two minutes now. Um, oh. So I know you have your own uh, story to share. So yeah. perhaps we should hear from you uh, as well. So back in March, when you talk about hope and about the, your uh, drafting the project, like briefing, having ideas, uh, was one day after the International Day of Happiness. And I was just checking the news, was everyone was so overwhelmed, so stressful and anxious. And I was thinking to do something small, but something meaningful for my neighborhood. So I printed some bright cards with like a smiley face on the top and a heart on the bottom and cut these little notes and put all the mailbox in my neighborhood. I was anonymous, so now I'm not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm reading the story. So if people are watching me now, they say, ha, ah, this is my neighbor. <laughs> All right, could you please read the story? Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to be a serious time manager tonight. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So mm -hmm. call 124 notes. It's back in March 21st, 2020. 
Saturday, March 21st, 2020. Early morning, I wore my disposable gloves and began my secret mission, spread happiness in my neighborhood. I had 124 notes in my pocket, printed in different bright colors. I will put them in all the mailbox around me. The, road, the roads were empty in total silence. Ghost town. A police car crosses the street. I heart the cards. Between the smiley face on the top and a heart in the bottom, the words in the note reveal my caring secret. Hi neighbor, we are all stuck at home, keeping our distance from others, doing our bit to keep our families and the world healthy. Stay positive, be strong. We are all in this together. Take care of yourself and your family, sending love and health, your neighbor. In light of the coronavirus pandemic, the idea of sharing a note maybe can bring us together as family and community to focus on practicing gratitude, kindness, love, and compassion. Late in that day, I saw a post on my neighborhood Facebook page. Thank you so much to the kind neighbor, whoever you are, who left this in the mailbox. It provides some much needed cheer and encouragement. If I made one person happy, that truly made my day. Deep in my heart, I just want to do something for people. We are all in this together. This is the story, anonymous person. <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia, for sharing your story. And that was where I think the seeds for this book, in a way. And uh, we uh, stay tuned, everybody, to watch Cynthia in action. And it's my pleasure to be uh, partnering with her to help this book move on. So I have to say goodbye to you. And thank you, Cynthia. Uh, thank you. Thank yeah. you for the writers, too. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yeah, we have two more days for submissions. Yes, just more two more days. Thank Good. you. <laughs> And now I have a few uh, participants with us. We put out in this call for submissions, not only original poetry uh, and some and stories, but we also asked for uh, sending some favorite poems uh, by poets who have inspired words of hope. And unfortunately, um, uh, we did not get as many contributions of favorite poems um, sent in and also realized the complication uh, as we started seeking permission and, and different complexity of it. So we have another plan, and that is to talk about the poem very briefly uh, that inspires hope in us and the, and the poet. And then I have invited these people who care about uh, the poetry of others, of favorite poets, to also share their original poem or two. Uh, that addresses hope in some way. So here we go. We're going to start off with Jenny, Jenny Nagloski. Uh, hi, Jenny. You just need to unmute yourself. Hi, Cheryl. Oh, good, good. And uh, <laughs> so thank you for being here and for submitting a favorite poem as well as original poem. And I wonder if you could tell about the poem that you had submitted, what you had, uh, how, what inspired you by Mary uh, Oliver, right? Yes, I had submitted actually two, one by Mary Oliver and another by David White. Um, and I would say both poets, Mary Oliver and David White, um, have inspired me in terms of going beyond myself by going deep within myself and going beyond myself by reaching out to others in solidarity. Um, to their pain and suffering and amazement and awe and to touch the lives of others deeply. So to leave a beauty mark <laughs> uh -huh. that shows that I love. So love, mm -hmm. I've inspired. And uh, thank you for hearing that and submitting them and uh, sharing the good word of others. And you also write poetry. Mm -hmm. uh, how long have you been writing? Mm -hmm. um, well, ever since I was a teenager, but I've really have written primarily for myself <laughs> and shared a few over the years with friends and family. Well, I'm glad that you submitted some of your uh, poetry and you're going to share uh, a poem um, or two now? Yes. 
Yes. Uh, you can tell the story and I'll just uh, let you know uh, there's about, with our modified time now, I think there's about uh, two or three minutes left. Okay. The first poem. Will I enter the moment through the mundane today? My head is whirling, caught in a storm of thought, none of which are good or uplifting. Down, down, down she goes, a sinking ship in a whirlpool, a dark sea of negativity. I say to myself, lift me up to the stars and the heavens away from the muck and mire. What value is there in the deep and dark? I want to travel high above it all, but then what do I become? So lofty among the stars and the heavens far from ground and dirt. Let my hands get dirty and not be seduced by the sterile desire to deny my soul and humanity. And then when I am truly lifted up, it will not be with the stars in heaven. It will be a new green shoot springing forth from the ground of dirt from earth. Thank you. I feel the hope of your message there. Thank you for sharing that beyond your family for submission for uh, this evening. And did you have a second one? I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, here it goes. Daylight has come. The night has given way to a new day and the practice of acceptance begins. To let be what is, or is it to be what is? An opportunity to be a human being, not a human doing. Who are we really? Where are we going? Why so restless and on the move? There is something rich and full right here to satisfy my dark, my restlessness. I sense it deep within me. I need not earn, achieve, or search for it. It's beyond my naming. I cannot capture it. It captures me. Although somehow we mutually agree. It is elusive and cannot be held in my hands for long. It flies from my grasp like a free bird in the wild, setting me free to be, even if only briefly. Freedom is found in contentment, as I sit here with my cup, cup of coffee in the silence of my living room, sun streaming in the window behind me, crackling noises from my baseboards as the heat comes on, intermittently breaking the silence. Everything I am and have are right now. What I have is my life, warmth, and a cup of coffee. And they are all gifts given to me as an entrance way to the miracle of being and being fully alive to all that is and is all in this moment. I am grateful and complete. Thank you so much, uh, Jimmy. And I'm grateful for you being here and sharing. No, thank you, Cheryl. Thank you for having me. Uh, take care. And I'm going to now invite Barbara Fuhrer. Um, so uh, let's see. And Barbara, thank you for joining us. Hello. Hello. Thank Barbara, you. It was nice to meet you for the first time and hear from you with your submission uh, by poet uh, can you uh, please remind us of the poet that you submitted the poem of? Okay, I had expected that I would like to read uh, Wendell Berry's The Peace of Wild Things, which has been one of my favorites for many, many years. Um, I guess um, I had really admire his focus on uh, nature and faith, both. And um, that poem has been so special to me. My husband actually bought me a, a painting of it with a heron on it made out of quilling and uh, with the poem written beside it. So wow. that was, it's been special. And I've spent a lot of time vacationing in New Hampshire and Maine on lakes and nature in all of its all of its phases are just, it's just so important to me. And that's in this time period, this pandemic, um, it's nature that has kept me going. Um, I managed to take walks almost every day. And I've just been so grateful that this has happened in the springtime. 
when everything is turning green and growing and there's this promise of nature that it will, that the seasons are predictable, certain things are happening. So you sort of feel like we'll get through it. Nature will help us. And I know I hear that in your own poetry uh, from uh, what, I, what, what I've read, your, uh, your love of nature, that it offers hope as well. And wonder if you could share that in the next uh, couple minutes. Okay. Did you bring one or two? I have a couple. I have a little book that I had published at one point. Um, it's mostly nature. but So the one I had sent in to you, I think, was about spring peepers, <laughs> which yes. is uh, always a special moment for me in nature when I hear those peepers in the spring. So this is called Spring Watch. It's April again. I am waiting, listening for the joy of spring peeper trills. Will it be tonight? Across the road, a neighbor's yard slopes to the spring swollen Concord River. Rough tree trunks rise from dark water. Early mist drifts among the branches, in the morning deeply quiet, the water cold and still. Later, April's sun gently warms the earth and the water responds, begins to pulse and move, ready for the great event. Tonight, the pools come alive. Singing starts, the chorus builds, life bubbles up. I lost my place. Life bubbles up, the essence of spring. Clear sounds like a favorite symphony ring out in the waiting night. Listen, it's spring. The peepers are here. And do you have one more? I do. Um, one that I just um, just wrote days ago, and I was playing off of um, William Carlos Williams here. So much depends on the basket of yellow pansies that I bought back in March, just before this all began. Placing money in the contact-free jar at the roadside flower place on Carlisle Road. Pleased to find a sign of spring. And still, they grow happily on my deck, a bright burst of sunshine and hope each morning, on which I do depend. Well, thank you so much. Um, and uh, uh, it's good to hear from your book you have, and we're delighted that you have submitted to this book project uh, as well. And thank you for also. I'm delighted to meet you, Cheryl, and thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Take thank care, you. Barbara. Okay. And uh, now we are going to move on to Ken Slaughter. Hi, Ken, if you could um, unmute yourself, we can hear from you. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Thank you for being yeah. here also for our lineup today. And I know you had sent a few favorite poets in and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about them uh, and maybe how they have inspired your poetry or heard from you and been inspired by your poetry for years at Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. What oh, do you okay. have to share with us? Thank you. Um, well, uh, the poets that I had selected were haiku poets. And uh, the first one was Basho. He's the first well-known haiku poet. And uh, the next one was Issa. And uh, what I like about, I don't write haiku myself. I don't think I'm good enough at it. I write tanka, which is a little bit longer, uh, five lines. But these poets, were able to express in three lines in English what it takes other poets a page to mm -hmm. express. And um, I've just found it to be uh, amazing uh, when, you, when you encounter a really good haiku. Now, um, this is probably my favorite because he was a lover of insects. And a lot of his poetry uh, was about insects and uh, he kind of personalized them and he talked to them and um, he kind of treated them like they were equals, at least in his poetry he did. So um, <clears throat> it's unfortunate. I, I know that those 
these poems are are not you know these are written like centuries ago so um but um but anyway that's that's i am tend to be a person of few words and i like short poems so my poems the ones that i have today are a little bit longer than a haiku they're five lines and so my first one is a man wearing a mask calls me by name. Every stranger could be a friend. Could you read that again, please, as we would ask you at Wake Up and Smell Sure. Room. A man wearing a mask calls me by name. Every stranger could be a friend. You, you don't really know. You see these people with masks on, and sometimes they're people that you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and also, every stranger could be a friend, maybe, you know? Right. Okay, so the second one is one that I wrote before I ever heard of COVID-19. But I think it's kind of relevant. It has an unexpected relevance. Uh, <laughs> which you'll see when I read the poem. Shadows intermingled on the snow, lives I have touched without even knowing. And can you read that again, please? Shadows intermingled on the snow, lives I have touched without even knowing. Now, of course, with COVID-19, we can touch lies without knowing it in a bad way. But so often, you know, when I wrote this poem, I was only thinking of the good way that we can, mm -hmm. we can touch people that we've never met or we don't even know that we've affected them. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so th those are the two that I have. And I uh, appreciate your asking me to come on. Uh, maybe I can give up a little bit of my time to whoever's coming next. Uh, well, thank you for sharing those poems and inspiration and hope, um, as well as talking about uh, your inspiring uh, haiku poets that we can go and look up and read more about these days. Mm -hmm. I uh, mm -hmm. know I was just talking about you of uh, being involved in community and working at a, a food bank, a local food bank, and want to thank you for that work that you're doing outside of poetry world as well. Oh, so thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for being here, uh, Ken, thank and take good care. Okay. And now we have Bonnie, who is last on our lineup of participants of um, right. those who sent, I think uh, this is uh, half of the group who sent in favorite poets for that segment of the anthology project. So Bonnie, it's good to see you. Thank you for yes, being hi. here with this group. And um, if you could share a few words about the poet um, that you had submitted the poem of inspiration you felt hope in. Right. So um, this is a poem by Galway Cannell. And I can't say that I've had it or read it a lot, but many years ago, I had a friend and she wrote me a letter and she put a poem in it. And one of the lines was, hair will be interesting again. And in the midst of COVID-19 and everything being so overwhelming and so huge, I really started focusing on when will the mundane come back again? When, when will hair be interesting again? And so I put in a search just for that line and up came the poem called Wait that people may know, which is really about a woman, a student, who was ending a love affair and she thought that life would never go on again. And so that thought came to my mind and I started thinking about, especially after I submitted, when I couldn't read this poem, this morning I was thinking about hope as the still point in waiting and that it's, it's in the mundane. Um, and if I, I have a minute, I, I have a little story and I do have a very short poem that I, I submit. Um, 
which is that years ago when I lived in New York City, there was a man named Thurman and he lived, this was in the early 80s when the Upper West Side was really seedy. But we all heard about him and he was this wonderful black man from South Carolina um, who was actually an actor and he lived in a studio apartment and we would all sit on the stoop of this old brownstone and wait for him. And if he, if he had to spend an hour and a half with you, he did. And we would all just sit on the stoop. But the one thing that I took away decades and decades later is that when th things seemed really bad, he would just say, all you need to know is that the sun will rise in the morning. That's all you need to know that you can just go home with that. And sometimes it was just the simplest thing. And I've thought about phases, you know, and we have the phases of opening and the phases of um, vaccines. And, you know, I have my own illness and I'm always waiting for phase two and the latest drug trial. But just looking at the phases of the moon is what can really get us by because that's the still point that's not going to change. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so we're waiting for a haircut or a job or to be able to, you know, not wear a mask. So I don't know what my timing is, but I have a very, very short poem. Yes, please do share. Okay. April 18 and light cotton balls of snow fall on daffodils while confused budding trees stand alone and clear eyes peer from quarantined windows. We know the snow will soon melt. The dull buds will burst into moist pink blossoms before green leaves appear. And we might not see it happen unless we stay behind the glass, watching, not touching, blessing every sacred breath. Oh, well, thank you so much, That's Bonnie. It sharing your story and your original poem and your favorite poem of hope or one of them yeah it's good to have you here as thank well you. thank you thank you and Sinja franza and barbara fear and jenny mcgloskey and ken slaughter um thank you all for being here and sharing your thoughts your stories about these poems of inspiration as well. And we look forward to uh, looking at the submission soon. And we're delighted you've been a part of this project and tonight in this way on, on a film uh, to share with folks at home. So I, one more thank you and uh, gratitude to all of you and uh, take good care. And so um, I'll say goodbye and thank you and look forward to reading and hearing more from all of you in the literary world. And now we're going to be moving on to um, Katie Frasinelli. And I know that she's here with us. And in the second segment of this program, as we, as I combine uh, usually poetry, um, uh, or an author and also a songwriter to uh, contribute to this program, a half hour each. And so Katie is here with us tonight, a singer songwriter from the Metro West. And um, Katie studied uh, theater and received her MFA and worked in California, uh, founded, was a founding member of the Shotgun Players and acted and directed and developed plays and then met, as I read the bio, a very handsome uh, man who was the set design uh, artist and uh, got married and he brought her back to the East Coast. And Katie did not start writing songs until she had twins. Uh, and the twins started to sleep is what I read in the bio, which is an interesting time to start writing songs. And uh, Katie has been writing them since, and I noted on her website the reference of Katie writing from the heart, whether it's about a broken heart or if it's about the justice, a broken justice system, uh, but that there is a message of hope 
in, in Katie's songs. Uh, she likes people to know. And Katie has her de debut CD called Let Me Down Easy. And she's here right now, uh, kind of down the street from me away. But I haven't seen you <laughs> in a while, Katie. Thank you for joining this evening. Hi, thanks How for are you having me. I'm yes. doing OK, doing all right. Yes. This is fun. Thank you for. Uh, Thanks for having me. Oh, yes, well, I'm, I'm delighted that you could join and uh, really like how you fit in with the theme this evening um, and how our uh, pandemic days, you have uh, your full family at home. Uh, oh, yeah. You, oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And you, uh, I'm sure, are keeping busy with family and work. And uh, do you have time to write songs or... Uh, collaborate these days? No, you know, it's so interesting. I feel like um, I feel like all over the internet, there's all these writers and, and musicians being so creative. And I feel like I'm in a real shutdown time. I was so glad that you asked me to do this because, um, you know, I've done a couple of those acapella recordings with my church band for our Sunday services. But other than that, I just really haven't um, haven't felt motivated. And I think it's part of it is just sort of being shut down in my little, my little office garret. Um, so it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting time. So. Well, I, I will say, because I've seen some of those, um, the band, the church band performances, it's, it's really great to uh, see and hear band members and get the sound synced and um, for people to hear, you know, wonderful, inspiring songs that way. So that's no small task you're doing there. It's I, fun. I don't do the hard part. <laughs> I just sing. Yes, but it's good to hear your voice. And I'm glad you're going to be sharing a few of your songs tonight. And um, one of the things about you in particular also is you are the uh, creator of the theme song for Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, yes. um, if folks don't know. And although Wake Up and Smell the Poetry is now retired as of May, um, if people go and click on in the archive past uh, programs, they will hear your even song in the last year or so. Um, and I know that was a song that to both uh, my ears for the words and the sound um, just uh, loved. Uh, my heart went out to, and I asked you if we could use it for theme song. And I know there's an interesting story involving poetry, uh, a relative, and, uh, and then your consequent song, if you could tell us about and then perhaps perform. Yeah, this was actually the the um, lyrics are a poem by my great great uncle Ridgely Torrance, who was um, at the time a very well known poet. Um, he wasn't very prolific, and I think a lot of people say that's why he didn't gain as much notoriety as cr critics expected him to. Um, but he was the editor of the new uh, poetry editor of the New Republic, and he was contemporary of Robert Frost and. Um, he, he's a very interesting person. And um, he was also a playwright. He, he wrote the first plays for Black people on Broadway that were um, representative of their true experience and not playing into stereotypes or not played by white actors. Um, so he was well known for that at the time too, which I'm proud of. And yeah. did you have a chance to read his plays? Um, yes, and as the critics said, they're not super well-written plays. <laughs> no, those actually are. He, had, he wrote a few other plays that were very um, kind of heavy. Yeah, but, and then, but yeah, he, he but was beautiful poet. Of the this song, this theme song, right? Yes. Would you like me to play it? Uh, you were asked to put this together. Is that right? Or oh yes, yes, my <laughs> my aunt Catchy. My great aunt Catchy said at one point, she said, will you put that song to music for my memorial? <laughs> I was like, sure. So uh, aunt Catchy is alive and well, <laughs> so, and okay. has been for quite some time since she asked me to write this. So she's all set with her song. for the Hopefully I'll never need to play it for her. Well, I, yeah, I was wondering, I know you have two uh, songs you mentioned of family and perhaps uh, you could move on, tell us what you like about Evensong and, and move into the second one as well, if you like. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, do you want me to, do you want me to play first? Yeah, sure, yeah, great. Sure. 
This is even song. Beauty calls and gives no warning. Shadows rise and wander on the day. In the twilight, in the quiet evening, we shall rise and smile and go away. Just realized why this is so low, because I'm not singing it with the cable on. Oh, oh, the cable. Why does this sound so bad? All right. It's a short song. I'll start it again. Yes. Beauty calls and gives no warning. Shadows rise and wander on the day. In the twilight, in the quiet evening, we shall rise and smile and go away. Under the flaming leaves, Freezes the sky, it is the season who grieves, not you, not I. All our springtimes, all our summers, we have kept the longing warm within. Now we leave the aftercomers to attain the dreams we could not win under the flaming leaves freezes the sky it is the season greets not you not I we have wakened sweet and had our birth and that's the end of earth and we have toiled and smiled and kept the light and that's the end of night thank you yeah i can see why your uh relative wanted that for yeah yeah i i like it it's um he someone said of, of him once that he was born somewhere between heaven and xenia ohio which was his hometown wow. he had a very um otherworldly quality to him. And I just found out that there are recordings of him reading his poetry that are in the Library of Congress, which I have to find out how one listens to that. But yeah. that was exciting. Well, thank you for sharing that. And you have another sure. family, uh, song? Yeah, so this one I wrote, um, my grandparents who, um, so my grandmother was his, um, she was his niece and, um, she and my grandfather were fabulously in love. Um, they met in May of 1939 and got married in August. And they were married for a very long time. And my grandfather lived to be 100 and 100 and a bit. Um, and he had a stroke one night, had a mini stroke. And, and I kept thinking, you know, I'm not ready to say goodbye. And that started to come into a song. And I was like, I want to write a sad song about about that. So I decided to write a song about their first date instead. So this is called The Long Way Home. When he thinks of heaven he pictures her blue eyes And for those curls he'd walk a thousand miles The dance is over, the night draws to a close And then she asks him to walk her the long way home and he says, I could hold your hand forever. And I could walk with you all night. The stars are fading and the sun's about to rise. But 
I'm not ready to say goodbye. From moonlit walk into front porch light. They thank each other for a lovely night. Her lavender perfume, he knows that's what he missed. And so he holds her gently for one soft kiss. And he says, I could hold your hand forever. And I could walk with you all night. The stars are fading and the sun's about to rise. But I'm not ready to say goodbye. She finds her key, turns the porch light off. A spring in his step down the long brick walk. He turns to see her bedroom light go on. She opens the window. He holds his breath as she begins to talk. And she says, I could hold your hand forever. And I could walk with you all night. The stars are fading and the sun's about to rise. But I'm not ready to say goodbye. I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I'm not ready to say goodbye. Oh, just beautiful. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. It's obvious that you uh, show a uh, love uh, and deep sense of connection to family in, in these songs that you wrote uh, for your first CD. And I'm just curious uh, why uh, your, your twins sleeping through the night, what got you going at that point to start writing songs? Um, I think I just needed something for myself at that point. Um, mm -hmm. They were kind of all consuming <laughs> and uh, and I'd always said, oh, I wish I could play the guitar. I wish I could sing. You know, I can't ever do that. And, um, and my husband got tired of hearing it. And he said, just to get a guitar and learn to play three chords. And, um, and so I would. And it was just, that was when I started playing music. And then you brought me to my first um, songwriter retreat or uh, songwriter session. And I... Uh, Steve Rapson came and he intimidated me, scared me. He said, if you want to come back, you have to write a song. And I was like, I don't know how to write a song. So I thought he was serious. So I wrote a song. And uh, so it's your fault. It's your fault on the songwriter. <laughs> he was serious and you were too. And, uh, it's, been a, it's been a true pleasure to hear your songs and the evolution of them. And I, what I know about you is you're very uh, committed to community uh, service um, through church and community, and you're involved in organizations for uh, racial justice and uh, immigration uh, justice. Is that correct also? Through, um... Yeah, I'm in a, a racial justice team at church, and, um, and we also collaborate with an immigration justice team. So, you know, it's really all of the justice issues are mm -hmm. intersected. Um, and I work with a group down in New Orleans called Families and Friends of Louisiana's Incarcerated Children. And, um, you know, I just, when I found them, I didn't know we incarcerated kids. And so it's been, it's been a eye-opening few years since I met them. 
Yes, well, it sounds like a lot of uh, important eye-opening work. And uh, what I know of you also is your uh, focus in your songwriting has been evolving over time, too. And some of your songs are addressing what you're learning from your work and community. And I know you had one um, about Ruby Bridges. Did you, would you like to share that? Yeah, this song, um, this song I wrote, I think it took me like three years to write it. <laughs> um, I got this I got this vague idea of the the white fabric sails of the slave ships and the say the white fabric of the KKK robes and then the white um, dress that Ruby Bridges wears in the Norman Rockwell painting of um, the what is it? I forget the the name of it, but it's when she integrates the school. Um, and they're throwing tomatoes at her. And, um, so trying to connect those. And um, I do a, a songwriting retreat with Dar Williams in the summer. And, and I explained what I wanted to write about. And she went, oh, OK. <laughs> uh -huh. And then over the course of three years, I sort of turned it into a song. And she was very supportive. Um, that's one thing that's going online this summer, our, my annual retreat. So it should be, it'll be interesting. Um, but I'm gonna miss I'm gonna miss being in person with them. Um, so this this is called Ruby Bridges. White sails below in the wind. Dark souls down below are their sin. Sold and beaten. And bound in chains to pick cotton to make the sails again. Dig deep inside where the spirit meets the bone. What flag do you fly when you're alone? What page of history do you call your own down deep? Where the spirit meets the bone. White robes, the devil lies within. Nine prayers pray, forgive his sins. He's gone too far, his hatred wins. Nine bullets traded for angels' wings. Dig deep inside where the spirit meets the bone. What flag do you fly when you're alone? What page of history do you call your own down? Where the spirit meets the bone. Black girl, starched white cotton dress. Eyes straight, deliberate steps. She opens her school book and on the first page, Ruby Bridges prints her name. Ruby Bridges prints her name. Wow. Powerful song. Thank you, Katie. Thank um, you. Have you shared that one out publicly? Uh, um, I've, I don't know if I have actually. Um, it's on my new album, which got halted. We were in the middle of recording when all this happened, so I don't know when we'll get back to that. So it's mm -hmm. nice to get to to get to play it. And I think today it's particularly um, appropriate. You know, I think we, um, as white people, tend to sort of say, "Well, oh, I feel so bad, and things are, you know, things have to get better." and we have to do better in this America and, you know, but it's like, but what are you doing? And, and really, if you look deep down, um, 
where do you stand and, and what do you do? And also the idea of, um, of people writing their own history that Ruby Bridges wrote, wrote the history. So, you know, yeah. which voices do we lift up? Mm. Well, thank you for debuting it here. Sure. And yeah, I, there, there's so much more I'd love to ask you <laughs> about, but I see we have about six, uh, a little less than five minutes actually. Okay. I know you had planned one more song to end. Sure. Oh, what is the name of your new CD? Um, uh, when the Winds Blow. All right. And is there a focus uh, evolution of some kind in the songs of this new CD? Um, they all seem to have a, a feeling of things are, are not great now, but they're, they can be. They're getting better and they can be better. Um, yeah, right once I assembled them, I was like, oh, that is kind of a common thread. Okay, we need, we need to hear that CD. And, and this is a song, if you'd like to give it an introduction. Uh, and yes, this, one, this one's called Life Goes On, and I actually wrote it right here when it was snowing, and it's, ah. it's not snowing now. So When it was snowing during the pandemic? No, this was a couple, a few years ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> a few years ago, yeah. Oh, no, I'm, not, I'm telling you, I'm not that creative <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right, here we go. Snow falls gently out the window, but a storm is raging in your head. And even though you haven't slept for hours, you pull the covers over your head and get out of bed. Life goes on and on and on and on and I will be right here beside you on and on and on and on and on. If you think you're all alone or you just need a gentle hand to guide you, my love goes on and on and on. Let me be the one who comforts you. Through the grays and the blues As you wander through The tunnels of your sadness It's me you'll never lose It's you I choose Cause life goes on and on and on and on And I will be right here beside you On and on and on and on and on if you think you're all alone, you just need a gentle hand to guide you. My love goes on and on and on. When your thoughts are all dark and the voices are tearing you apart, rest your head close to my heart. Rest your mind, let the healing start. Cause life goes on and on and on and on and on. Well, life goes on and on and on and on and I will be right here beside you. On and on and on and on and on. If you think you're all alone, you just need a gentle hand to guide you. My love goes on and on and on. So hold on, my love goes on and on and on. So hold on, my love goes on and on and on. So hold on. Well, thank you so much, Katie. A timely and important message and song as uh, the other songs you shared with us. And I see we're just about out of time. And uh, I appreciate
and being creative out there. It's okay. Yeah, that's it's okay. right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Katie, and take care. Thank you. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Thank you, HCAM crew, also. Take care, everyone. <laughs>